Nice. Yeah. What you're hearing are the sounds of people everywhere putting on Bomba socks, underwear, and T-shirts made from absurdly soft materials that feel like plush clouds. Yeah, that plush. And the best part? For every item you purchase, Bombas donates another to someone facing homelessness. Bombas. Big comfort for everyone. Go to bombas.com slash Wondery and use code Wondery for 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas.com slash Wondery. Code Wondery. You're at a place you just discovered. And being an American Express Platinum card member with Global Dining Access by Resi helped you score tickets to quite the dining experience. Okay, chef. You're looking at something you've never seen before, much less tasted. After your first bite, you say nothing because you're speechless. That's the powerful backing of American Express. See how to elevate your dining experiences at americanexpress.com slash with Amex. Terms apply. One, two, three, four. Those are numbers, but you already knew that. If you want to know what number you're going to pay each month for your car, use Kelly Blue Book My Wallet on AutoTrader. They're really good at numbers. Auto Trader. Well, hello, and welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast for all the crap we love to talk about on Yo Bravs. So I'm Ronnie. That is Benderson over there. Hello, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Good. I'm so good. It's a great week so here good. over at Bravo with Bravo News. Lots of stuff going on. Everyone's suing Andy for giving him coke. Um, J- uh, Jackson, and Brittany are pretending to break up for ratings. Um, and we've got... We've had a crazy reunion weekend. One of the reunions was Beverly Hills. That was a two-parter. And then Miami, we don't know. We haven't recorded it yet. We're recording it after this. But that's a bonus episode. So go listen to that on Patreon. If you're on Patreon, also stop by and watch this recap instead of listening to it. Just stop listening. What are you, a wuss? Go watch it with your eyes, you lazy. Use your Put your eyes to work. Um, Use your eyes. You can watch all our videos uh, being a member of Crappens On Demand. Also on Patreon, we're doing a comedy festival, the Netflix Comedy Festival over in Los Angeles at the Kookaburra Lounge in May. And we're also going on a European tour in May. We're going to Dublin, we're going to Birmingham, we're going to London. Mm. Uh, so come see us, anybody over the pond, across the pond, if you will, come see us. Uh, you can get tickets for everything I just talked about, links to Patreon, everything like that, over at Watch What Crappens. Dr. Kalma. Yeah. And if you just want to hear us drag Kyle for three hours um, for being a stupid face, go listen to Beverly Hills. Yeah. <laughs> today okay. Summer is, House. But today it's Summer House, and this is a big one because I personally thought, Ronnie, we were going to have to wait a few episodes before um, Carl and Lindsay fell apart. But um, nope, it's happening. It's t- well, second episode of the season, and they are a f- the, the disaster we always knew they would be, but they didn't have the ability to be just yet. But now it's happening. They can no longer put on the facade. They can no longer be just that, yeah, we're just going to go to the White House and be like a happy couple at the White House. Like it's all falling apart right in front of ours. Listen, two train wrecks do not a dining car make, okay? They are two wrecked trains. You can't, that's it. I mean, it's just wreckage. It's just going to be wreckage. Wrecks don't help wrecks, okay? There has to be one person who's got their shit together. There can't just be two messes, okay? No. I've learned that in my own life, okay? I'm still waiting for the wreck cleaner upper <laughs> to, to join me in my life. And until that happens, I'm not going to go with another wreck like myself. Because not only are you hurting yourselves, you're hurting everybody around you, okay? And by the way, I'm not only talking about you, Lindsay and Carl. I'm talking about you and Amanda and Kyle. You are you two are fucking embarrassing at this point. Yeah. I mean, everyone's concentrating on Carl and Lindsay right now. But can we look at Kyle wandering around the house in that sad mullet and his little like Harry Styles beads that he's wearing on his uh, wrist, just carrying around his lover boy in the confessional even, just crying with a wife that hates his guts so openly. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is very sad. The whole show is very sad. Yeah, everything's so falling apart. So um, 
so it. we pick up the last episode ended with Paige and Amanda and I think maybe Sierra. I don't know. They're like sitting around and they've just told Amanda, you know, Paige just told Amanda that Kyle's been venting or whatever. And Amanda's now like more angry at Kyle than she already was, which was already pretty angry. So um, and we're at the 4th of July party still, by the way. Yeah, so everyone's like wooing and having fun and supposed to be like a light fun time. Amanda's like, oh my God, I mean, if Kyle doesn't like me, then like go be a single then, Kyle, just go. Oh. <laughs> I think that Kyle is projecting, like I was literally born to have children and all I've wanted was to have kids in a family, but the business needs to be in place where he can take a step back and be part of his kid's life and Kyle's like scared and he's like oh Amanda's not ready for it not me it's not my problem it's Amanda's issue Kyle so yeah she is now going to ruin everybody's everybody you know not Amanda just that ray of sunshine and coming through so uh, we see some rando homely people twerking by the way we have to say something about the difference between homely and homey because someone was asking me in a DM why we were calling the mothers, uh, Lisa's mother and aunt on Real Housewives of Miami, homely. That's a you thing. And I think it's because you watch um, Love Island because apparently, I didn't know this, I did notice you calling them that and I was like, that's harsh. Oh. But um, homely in America means ugly. It does not mean like homey. I think you mean homey, but I think, I think I overseas homie. they say homely on Love Island, meaning like, She's just a small town girl. She's homely. So I think you've watched so much Love Island that you've picked <laughs> up that term in their way. But basically, you were calling two older sweet ladies last week in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're you're totally right. I actually never knew that. I thought the British way was the way, which just shows how suited I am for our London shows. So, uh, the, well, I thought it meant ugly because my mother has been calling ugly people homely forever. So, I mean, I assume that's what it was. But I was like, wow, Ben really hates these older ladies. On I thought, it, I'm, so, okay, well, I'm not going to homely shame you. You know, could you imagine? <laughs> that is hilarious. Well, think of all the other things and people I've called homely over the years. So Many, and I, I think I've said, I think I've told you before. I think that means ugly, and you're like, no. It doesn't it just means and then i looked it up and it said it could be either one of the things but the dm I, explained to me that overseas where we're going to be yes. on tour soon ding says they say homely in the way that i think you meant it so okay so i looked it up just now because i was like have i been is this what's been happening and so <laughs> the definition north american of a person unattractive in appearance and then yeah. similar plain plain featured plain looking plain as a pike staff so i think it's like when they say unattractive it's like plain plain like unattractive in a plain way you know um that's what i'm getting or as we're like, like u g l y you ain't got no ally. <laughs> no no that's the north american north american oh. is unattractive in appearance and the synonyms that are offered up are unattractive plain plain looking etc etc et so ugly. it seems to be it's unattractive but like it's not ugly it's just like it's unappealing. It's milk toast or whatever. So the British version is you say it. Of By the way, milk toast s- is very British as well. Well, what we're <laughs> well I don't think everyone realizes that I actually am British. Okay. <laughs> I know it's the early You're days. Fit. You're fit. You're the <laughs> I'm fittest. Super fit. I'm really chuffed about these definitions. So um, British of a place or surroundings. So it means simple, but cozy and comfortable as in one's home and a modern hotel with a homely atmosphere. So I think I always, I did conflate homely with homey. Um, Cause in my mind, homely was just sort of like, yeah, something kind of like plain, unremarkable, but sort of like cozy and and cute and nice, but like definitely not flashy or whatever. And so I think I maybe bridged both those words and make my own definition. Okay, well I, like I love it. it though. Thank you for teaching me that because that is so hilarious to well, know. Well, it's rare that I get to you, that I know something, but I, someone told me a DM. So thank you because they're like, I'm sure you guys didn't mean to call those ladies ugly, and I was like, we didn't. <laughs> but I don't I know did. that I would apologize I if I did. You know what Come I mean? Come at and me, bro. I just want to clarify what I just said here. Back to the summer house recap, is that I am calling these people ugly. These ugly <laughs> dancing people. Intentional homely people. <laughs> this is intentional. Um, but I don't know if they're nice or not because they're just randos on a show. But these people are homely and they're twerking. Just homely people stop twerking. Nobody needs to see you twerk, okay? Mm. Twerking is for hot people. 
I don't yeah. want to see ugly people clapping their butt cheeks together. Okay. I'm not yeah. doing it. I won't do it to you either. I'll make you that bond. How about that? Yeah. So then Wes's friends come over and um, they're black and Sierra loves that. She's like, I knew it. I knew we had black friends. And then we see a mechanical well, Even more shark. importantly, they're all short because that's true. They're all in his height. Yeah. You know, guys cannot hang out. You can't have just Kyle and Carl are different. And we've seen the resentment build up between them. It's very difficult for short men to be friends with tall men. It's, it's, mm -hmm. There's a barrier to get past. A there's barrier. literally a movie about it. It's called Twins. So, um, I mean, look at that movie poster. Am I right? Um, That's right. So, uh, Sierra. So now it's time for a mechanical shark. So Sierra gets on board and she lasts for 22 seconds. Because that's the way mechanical bull or shark operators do it, which is that it's total, it's total sexism because women get on there and they do it nice and softly. And then guys get on there and they shake them off in a second. They do it every single time. And then Sierra's like, I was on for 22 seconds. And then Wes lasted for one second. But to be fair, I actually don't think that Wes was shaken very much. I think he just like slipped. He just, he hopped on and just fell off. Yeah. Um, he fell right off. I mean, he, he was fell terrible. Right off. And and of course, he had to give the whole speech first, where he's like, "I grew up riding horses. My dad trained me on technique, and we'd watch rodeos together." You know, I mean, there's just something about riding. You know, um, it's go time. And then he falls off in two seconds. Right. <laughs> it's very Big Brother. Like Big Brother loves to do that with their contests, where they're like, yeah. someone says, "I was in the zone, and I'm gonna win, and I'm gonna do it," and then they cut them off and show them like having like a powder of like a, an explosion of like red paint on their face and they're eliminated yeah and you know it is also like big brother because the previous challenge was holding on to one of the biggest wieners uh in the house and sierra yeah. won that one um sure. and his name was austin okay right who we're still getting flashbacks of which i don't we get one today and uh, nobody needs that it. can Didn't we please stop flashing back to austin in any way shape or form nobody needs austin's face in their life he's like ugly people twerking keep it off my tv yeah. So now, the, speaking of which, there's more dancing, and Kyle is dancing with Mon, the Rastafarian banana. And then Danielle is talking to a guy named JD, which, by the way, JD, those initials have not always worked out well on Bravo. Um, hey, I say, I say, I say, I never forget. And then Danielle's, Danielle tells us, Last summer was rough. I lost my boyfriend. And in Colorado, there were icy conditions. So this summer, we're just focusing on fun. Just definitely not anyone under the same roof. Whoa, bad bitch era begins now. <laughs> and then we go to Paige and Sierra, and Jesse's talking to them. He's all wasted. And Paige is like, what's up, Jesse Solomon? And um, he's Sierra says something like, wow, you have... Are they called pectus polydents? What are they called? That's pectus excavatum. Um, he's like, yeah, which I guess is like a depression in like your chest. And he's like, yeah, I just call it my dent. You can fit a full 12 ounce beer in this thing. If I lay down, it's deep. And Paige goes, oh, good for you, which we saw in the trailer. She's good for you. And he goes, no, good for you. And she goes, oh, good for me. Oh, wow. Thank you. And then she does this thing where her lips start moving. She's like full of rage because she doesn't know what to say back. And her lips, she starts like forming words, but can't get any voice out. She's like, you it's think she's rageful? Pit. I don't think she's rageful. I think she's. Well, like, I think she was trying to yeah, be like. I still got it, bitch. I Jesse feel like Solomon, she was Jesse Solomon. <laughs> I want to Facetime like... Craig right now, Jesse Solomon. <laughs> I don't think that she appreciated him saying no. Good for you. I feel like she's like, no, I'm the one who's being clever in this conversation, not you. No. So, <laughs> so it wasn't the hitting on her. It was uh, the general sexism. I think was <laughs> was annoying. I just loved her rageful mouth. Uh, um, so, so he kind of walks away, but not really. And Sierra's yeah. like, so are we going to talk about somebody's like feeling you? I mean, God. And he's like, I'm still here. Hey, miss you, miss you, Paige. And she goes, okay, Jesse Solomon. <laughs> he wants me. And he would want, he like wants me so bad. So now, um, there's uh, Jesse and Kyle are peeing in the corner. And Jesse's like, is this our spot where we compare dicks? And Kyle's like, yeah, my dick is so dope. You don't have to even compare it. Come on, give me a little cross. So they cross dreams, which I didn't know that guys actually really did do that, but I guess they do. Um, and Kyle's like, yeah, buddy. Uh, still trying to make yeah, buddy a thing after Jersey Shore did it like 12 years ago. <laughs> Send um, it, yeah, buddy. And then it and cuts, then to, it hot cuts dogs. to hot dogs on the grill. Which... <laughs> 
great. So then uh, Jesse and Kyle are sitting around uh, having just like cross dreams and like sword fought. It's like, yeah, let's chill together. So Kyle's like, obviously, like, there's us and the moon and the stars, you know. And whenever we get through a party, we get to know each other. And so I just wanted to, I don't want to stress you out, dude. But, like, you know, like, everybody's like, where's this Jesse Solomon guy fit in the picture? And now I know. Big, big fucking dick. You know, we should talk <laughs> about Winter House because there's, like, a lot of names we could be pissing together in that snow, big dick. Guy, I love you. Uh, Jesse's like, I'm not going to say that I'm great, but I know that I'm great. And I hope that they think I'm great too. And if they don't, that's not on me. That's on them. So now Paige is eating a hot dog and saying, I love a fucking hot dog. Nothing says 4th of July like a hot dog. If you like hot dogs, like and subscribe. Smash that subscribe button on Hot Dog Energy. She's then, doing. She's having a very Lisa Rinna, Erica Jane moment where she's like, oh my God, I love hot dogs. <laughs> hot dogs. Hot dogs. I love them. Hot dogs. I hate so many hot dogs. Like you guys do not fucking eat hot dogs. You know, we didn't. We didn't see the next bite that Paige just threw behind the fucking grill. You know, <laughs> I know. sit here and act like Paige sits around eating fucking hot dogs. This show. This show has made me try to believe a lot, but I'm not right. falling for that one. So Kyle is still talking to Jesse, and he's like, "So uh, anyone you're eyeing?" And Jesse's like, um, "Am I supposed to only hit on the single girls? Besides your wife, obviously." <laughs> And Kyle's like, uh, well, it depends on how much time you want to waste. <laughs> Are you like, Paige is my jam? He's like, maybe. You know, there's so many girls out there that don't have boyfriends, but the best ones typically do. <laughs> and I'm a killer. I get with girls. Not that I'm going to steal your girls, but if there's a cute girl, I'm going to go after it. So this guy's a total douche. Um, <laughs> total douche. Huge yeah, not douche. that anybody is surprised by that, but he's just like wants things because other people have them. It's like the guy who won't buy a house. He only wants to like try and move into yours. I feel yeah. like this is why squatter laws were made. People like this, you know, this house think, is good enough for you to live in it. Why shouldn't I fucking live here too? I'm going to just live here too. No, we don't all just get to settle for the same things. I mean, what is this a bank? We, we're not just all settling at all times. Get the fuck out of here. Find your own. I also think it might be a fallacy to say that the best girls are, are already taken. His logic is they're so good, which is why they get snatched up. Um, there are terrible people that are in terrible relationships all over the place. <laughs> there, you know, I'm sorry that for uh, some girls who actually have standards, uh, that they actually hold out for decent people, uh, <laughs> that that's actually considered not a plus for you. Mm, yeah, I mean, I'd look, I think he's got a point. One of the important things on Amazon you do, you see how many reviews something has, you know? I mean, that's kind of important. Like, how many people were happy with this purchase, mm. you know? Yeah, I like you, um, you give the reviews that actually are using the product more credence than you do reviews without pictures, you know, like I'll watch the little reviews that people make on Amazon where they're like, hi, it's me, Paige. I have a blazer with cutouts right at the ribs for no reason at all. And I love them. <laughs> Mom, hold the camera up. Mom. Mom, did you fall asleep? Mom, hold the camera up. Like, they're the most unprofessional videos on there. But I will still be like, oh, my God, that girl loved the blazer with rib cutouts. I'm getting one. And then before you know it, I'm showing up at the crappies with my ribs hanging out, you know, or <laughs> I, colored on ribs. I definitely just watched a little Amazon review that I, I loved. loved. Them. It was def and it was a, it was for sure a lady who was homely in both American and British senses of the word. It was great. It was great. I like when they're just like trying to make a career in Amazon reviews and you can oh, tell yeah. it's like they're still working it out, but they're like, okay guys, uh, got this new Topo Chico today. Uh, just want to do a quick unboxing review. First of all, want to say the top came off so easily. I mean, really the best top that came off. So you can see it's made out of glass. And if you do this, if you blow into it, You could, it's not the best whistle. You know what? It's not the best. I could have made a better whistle. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back to Pellegrino. All right. Thanks for what mom. Did you fall asleep? Mom, hold up the camera. Mom. It's, <laughs> you know, um, I'm like sad that Amazon does not have better functionality to like really look at your search history. You can only see like the most recent ones because I definitely saw one last week that was like so perfect for me and like all those i feel like every review everyone who does try to be like a professional amazon reviewer it's always they're broadcasting from some brown kitchen 
you know, like a kitchen with like a lot of brown countertops and brown backgrounds. It's like, okay, I want to talk to you about this air fryer. Okay. I really like it a lot. Now look over here and they turn it upside down and they say, now look here, you see here, they got a button on the bottom here. That actually, I like that a lot. I like that. You see that button? Can you see that button right here? Can you see the button? Yeah. See that button? I like touch that. That's a good place for the button. All right. And then just the video just ends. You're like, okay, well there's the button. (laughs) It's like a terrible review by a terrible person. And so then what? You don't buy the thing. Reviews are important is my point. So yeah. Amanda is now giving her Amazon review of Kyle behind a bathroom door. And Amanda is very passive aggressive. She does this shit so she can later say, I didn't know they were recording us. She does it mm-hmm. all the time where she goes behind the bathroom to say the worst things behind the bathroom door. And then later she's like, what? That was a private moment. It's not my fault after eight years. I still don't understand how TV works. But she's, it's not anything new anyway. She's back there telling the girls, like, oh my God, Kyle is annoying as shit. And like, I do all this stuff for him and he complains about me. I mean, Amanda, where are my phone chargers? Amanda, where's my bag? Amanda, where's my underwear? Amanda, why don't you spend more time with me? Amanda, do you know how to make anything else other than guacamole? I mean, (laughs) I just keep telling him if you're so unhappy, leave, Kyle. Oh, my God. Amanda, take your advice, please. 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 Your relationship sucks, bro. Get out of it already. I can't with you. It's like the same person like in every Amazon review giving it one star. Like, How many times do you get to review the same product? Get something else. There are plenty of that product out there. Go to Temu. You know, just give up Amazon. <laughs> Shop like a billionaire. Tim you. What a great Tim song. You. Oh. <laughs> Amanda is kind of the Tim you of this of this cast. Let's be honest. Oh my god! Shut up. Tim you. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Hey, grown-ups! The Cat in the Hat cast is a new podcast from Wondery, perfect for the whole family. Join the Cat in the Hat and your favorite Dr. Seuss characters as they get whisked away on a new adventure every week. Fish dreams of creating his very own polite and quiet podcast. That is, until he gets a surprise visit to his fishbowl podcast studio from the cat in the hat himself. And it becomes very clear that the cat has other plans for the podcast. And those plans are the opposite of quiet. Sing along to new favorite songs, try your luck at Titanic tongue twisters, have some fun with wondrous wordplay, and most importantly, bring your family along for all of the adventures in the Cat in the Hat cast. Follow the Cat in the Hat cast on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to the Cat in the Hat cast early and ad-free on Wondery Plus. Join Wondery Plus in the Wondery app or on Wondery Kids Plus on Apple Podcasts today. So, um, uh, yeah, so she's complaining and Paige is like, um, for Amanda, since she knows how much she does, Kyle saying that she, that, that she doesn't think that she's ready to have a baby kind of feels like a knife in her stomach. Like if Craig tried to imply that I wasn't ready to have a children when I, when I wanted children, it's like, I'm raising you. It's a full-time job. It's very hard to take care of a grown man, baby. It's a lot of work. And then you want me to come to Charleston. What were we talking about, by the way? I think I just spiraled into Craig. Mm. So then, um, Danielle's dancing with JD and uh, she's like, oh, my God, your boys are, like, laughing at us because, like, we're partying too hard. Hey, guys, we're supposed to be partying right now. <laughs> and then they, like, kiss a little bit. Like, they share, like, a pack. But now it's nighttime, which means all the guests have to leave. So they all leave. And um, Danielle's like, guys, I'm going to cook some quesadillas. I'm like, you guys just had quesadillas last night. So um, everyone I think leaves. Sierra is actually the one who says oh, she's going to cook You're right. quesadillas. It is. Which is very important because it was the first night she paid attention to anything being cooked was yesterday. And now she's a fucking quesadilla expert. And this is why you need to call out bad quesadillas because look what West has started. Now he's sent somebody out, out there who doesn't know how to make quesadillas. And everyone's just going to be eating burnt ass quesadillas. You know, uh, or maybe uh, in this case, rubbery quesadillas, because Sierra goes up to the oven and she's like struggling to set the oven. And then she goes, is this not a microwave? <laughs> now, far be it for me to say that models um, that that they're not very smart. But in this case, I think that Sierra is kind of living up the stereotype. Mm-hmm. Paige is like, um, that's a microwave. So she goes, oh, my uh, God, this kitchen is like so high tech for no reason. <laughs> Yeah, those ovens and microwaves just are like, 
there's just like a glimpse into the future, you know? <laughs> it's like we're living in 2001 Space Odyssey. Well, which let me tell past. you what's really futuristic. Danielle, she's a party girl and she's got a smoke machine, guys. <laughs> so she's like fog <laughs> machining the house up. And Paige is like, oh my God, what are you doing? The smoke alarm's going to go off. <laughs> and Gabby is like, uh, Wes, where's your fan? And Wes goes, my biggest fan? She's right here. And he points to Sierra. And Wes is like, yeah, there's another single guy in the house. And he's tall. But I think that's all he's got right now. And I'm vibing with Sierra right now and everyone else. So he's got his work cut out for him. Yeah, I mean, everybody looks down at me and they give me a smile every single time. <laughs> I've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Uh, so, so then, then Danielle's in the party room, which is just oh, this is the sad. sad party room. It's like that little disco light thing that your mom buys at the grocery store for when she's invited all of her friends' kids to come over to make you feel like you have friends. And it's just you standing in a corner and <laughs> it's these mortifying lights this going room, around in circles. <laughs> this room with the little light from the sharper image that I had as a kid because I loved it. I would turn it on in my room and just have like disco lights going. Uh, and She's in this room. The fog machine's going. It's like the room that's just off the foyer. And she goes, the Sendit Lab is open for business for anyone who wants to partake in absolute debauchery. I was like, okay, thanks. That's, <laughs> this reminds me of like uh, in college, the student center was always trying to throw these parties to be like, yeah, we're going to have a cool party at the student center while everyone's like at the frat party is getting wasted. Yeah, that's Danielle. The Danielle in a nutshell. So um, then Kyle comes in to sadden it up more with his mullet and his white glasses. It's just the whole the whole affair is very sad. Now, I do have to say the show has done a good job this year of basically recasting it. I mean, they did get the new Carl, even down to the missing nut. Wait, yeah. Carl has an extra nut, not a missing an extra nut. nut. Right? But between the two of them, um, they're nutted. They have, they're fully they're, nutted. Yeah, actually. got the proper number of nuts. Yeah. So um, they've got the new Carl and they've got the who's West, do you think? Is he supposed to be the new Kyle? He might be kind of a new Kyle. Yeah. And I think the new I think Jesse and and, and West are great additions to this cast. I think that's exactly what this Oh, show I've learned that lesson. I'm not saying shit right now. That's too soon. That's too I've I've put my tr- too much trust in, in this network. So, I will not do that. But it's looking promising so far. So I it's like they show Kyle and Danielle kind of being sad. And then, you know, it's time to cut to the new cast. And I kind of like it. It's like up your up your game. You know? Yeah. So then, meanwhile, uh, Sierra and Gabby and Amanda and Paige are just like in a bedroom, lying on beds and stuff. And Sierra's like, dude, I feel like I'm in Ibiza. I've never been, but I imagine this is what my misery would be like. <laughs> just listening to Danielle downstairs, like dancing to LMFAO. <laughs> shot, 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 shot. And uh, Kyle is sitting with his banana alone downstairs. And he's like, I love your spirit, man. You're always so positive. <laughs> yeah and um so now it's the next morning july 2nd people are waking up it's like me- everything's messy and amanda wakes up like a ray of sunshine on this long holiday weekend i want to go, go home kyle it's like wow great so much fun Fucking Amanda's amanda who's so done nothing but talk shit about kyle since this the cameras went up this year and by the way for the past three years straight but especially yeah. this year is so mad that she, Kyle talked about her behind her yes. back. She just can't believe it. <laughs> so Paige wakes up in a full outfit. I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah, always be prepared. I'm ready. So Amanda's like she's she's now. Uh, we then go back to Amanda and she's like moping around the room. And Kyle's like, I want to shower. It's just don't yell at me. And she goes, Um, what do you mean? Don't yell at you. Well. When the opportunity arises for us to leave, I just want to shower first. Well, then why don't you hop in the shower? Don't go downstairs and wait. He's like, oh, God. But this is so Kyle, because guess what he doesn't do? He does not jump in the fucking shower. You see what I mean? Like, Amanda's an ass. Like, she's hard. It's hard to watch somebody. It's like going with a complainer to a restaurant that complains about their food and then they order the same thing every time and complain about the same thing every fucking time. You ordered yeah. this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't feel bad for you anymore. But she does have a point because Kyle doesn't the, go to the bathroom. The restaurant's sucky. And instead, he goes down to mope in front of everybody else and make himself look so fucking victimized. And then, you know, he waits till the last goddamn second to take a shower. Because Kyle does 
push her buttons. She, I mean, she just complains and complains and complains and she's such a wet rag. And yet at the same time, he's the water on the rag, right? Like he is the one that really does push her. So a lot of times I always like vacillate back and forth. Like who is the problem here? And I've decided I don't have to decide who is the problem. I can just be comfortable knowing they are both problems and they're both problem. They're problems to each other. And this is their love language. And this also completely um, destroys all of Jesse's theory, which is that maybe not the best people are the ones that are in relationships. Well, that's true. Yeah. So then he's basically like, well, I'm sensing this energy from you. And she's like, I hate you. Yeah, that's basically the energy I'm giving out. <laughs> so then what does he do? Goes down to Mope instead of taking a shower, which helps nothing. So then right. the girls are in the kitchen and uh, Danielle's like, guys, guys, guess what? I got three numbers yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, I got tons of numbers. <laughs> wow, Club Send It was really popping off last night. I'm sure they were just knocking down that door, Danielle. Every time, yeah. Danielle's like, yeah, I've still got it. Yeah. It's because that night of debauchery, bitch, I partied. I partied. And so uh, they're looking at photos that Danielle took on Gabby's phone of her with guys. And Sierra's like, oh, my God, you really love a skinny man. And then Wes comes up to Sierra and goes, yeah. And you like a like a big man, like sort of joking that he's like a little thicker. And so she laughs and she tells us, you know, Wes is a hoot. He seems to always have something to say to whatever I say. And I like it. But he could be funny all day long because I had funny. I fucked around with funny. I hated funny. I was like. Remind me who funny was again, because you're showing me flashbacks of Austin, but I don't think I'm getting the funny. Is this was was this your standard for funny, Austin Kroll? Oh, well, honey. then the clip that they show of Austin is just him making a comment about her boobs. I mean, where's the best comment of all time? Look like goddamn something stinging <laughs> <on> right now. <laughs> I forgot about that. But seriously, Sierra, like the fact that you're completing West West being funny with Austin awesome being funny, I just don't think it's the same. Also, Sierra, let's not pretend that you were fucking Austin because he was funny. You were fucking Austin because he had another TV show and he had height. He's tall. So let's stop. Let's stop. Like, oh yeah, I was just with him because he was funny. Nope. No. <laughs> funny was not the leading funny was not and continues to not be and has never been a leading characteristic of Austin Kroll. Yeah. So then back to these two. <laughs> wanna go eat? She's like, I wanna go home. Take a shower and we're gonna leave or I'm going in a car with other people who are ready to go home. <laughs> oh, God. oh my god, kick this is why children are left on the side of the freeway right here. <laughs> You know, and, and the best part is that Paige already knows something's wrong because she's like, hey, where are Amanda and Kyle? They never sleep this late. Usually there's someone being really annoying and mopey around us at this time. Strange. We're having like a nice breakfast. This Weird. is a problem with um, girl, the girl power thing that goes on on this show because they're like, I'm a good friend. I'm going to go talk to my girlfriend. It's like, oh, no, you poor thing. <laughs> You're just like, no, don't do that. Because, of course, she has to go talk to fucking Amanda now because Amanda's making it as clear as day that something's going on. So now they all have to go kiss Amanda's ass for the, the rest of the day and listen to her bitch about Kyle. She's done this the whole fucking weekend. Okay. And now they're going to have to do it with Lindsay too. So yeah, all these people, you just need to, if you're, if your friend is just being a mopey asshole, just stop supporting it. Just, it's yeah. okay to be like, I don't support you when you're like this. Bye. Yeah, that's something that you do in your 20s and maybe early 30s. But then eventually you say, mm, they're going to have to figure it out on their yeah, own. Yeah, because you realize those people never change. They never figure it out. They are always whining. And the second that you're like, you know what? I love you and I r respect you and I respect that you're going through something. But until you're willing to make changes in your relationship, I can't listen to the same thing every day. Yeah. They hate you and will move on to the next person who will listen to every fucking bit of it in their 50s. Trust me. It's like you're in the It doesn't get better. Yeah, it's like hair. It's like thinning hair. It doesn't just magically get better. Okay, mm. it only goes downhill, unless you have Rogaine. Apparently, um, so Paige... slows it. Doesn't stop it. Oh well, I don't take it. I'm just gonna thin away. So Paige goes up to Amanda because Kyle is saying like, "Yeah, I'm feeling that like sense of anxiety and dread like that I used to get like that I would get like." when I was like out too late and drinking and making mistakes and coming home and realizing I did something wrong, except none of that happened this time. So Paige goes up to Amanda and Paige is like, um, so they're all eating breakfast down there. I know they're so stupid, right? Um, what's going on with you, mopey face? And Amanda's like, oh, he just likes talking shit about me. I'm like, so over it, Kyle. 
Um, also, Kyle knows that Paige obviously started this, right? Because <laughs> yeah. he talked to Paige and then Amanda's mad, you know? But also, right. that's why Kyle talked to Paige. He's just trying to get a rise out of Amanda through Paige. Like, he's so mm -hmm. obvious, you know? So he's like, well, did you say something to her? Was it all about me? And she's like, it wasn't all about you. <laughs> oh, God, I guess I have to go take care of this shit now because you brought it to my attention. <laughs> So she goes, and Amanda just starts crying and going over the same thing. Like, oh my god, all he does is complain about me to people. He just wants to make me look like shit. Mm -hmm. All the usual stuff. So now they all go down to the kitchen again. And um, Paige is like, I don't have any eggs. And Jesse's like, um, okay. Wasn't uh, that last season's storyline? Please don't make <laughs> us sit around and watch you all take egg tests again. <laughs> So they're like, Jesse Salomon, make a toast. He's like, I'd like to toast, make a toast to new beginnings. And Danielle goes, and I don't think in this house I've ever had such a good weekend. Like, does everyone remember Club Send It, right? Like, how fun. We'll never forget, right? Everyone's like, yay. Fun weekend. Yeah, they're still trying to do their whole, hey, guys, isn't it? Hey, producers, isn't this more fun without Lindsay and Carl? And I have to say, it's not. It, it's uh, really not. <laughs> I mean, I felt like it looked more fun for them. <laughs> Obviously, it wasn't as good TV for us, but for exactly. sure, you can see that they were they were like, oh my God, we all like talked and hung out and acted like we weren't on a reality show, just we're actually with people we enjoy. But I think that they were, I think that they're being insincere because they still had to deal with Kyle and Amanda all weekend. Amanda like making oh, everything true. about her and Kyle being mean to her. It's like, congrats, because that's what you're going to get if you get rid of Lindsay and Carl. It's going to be 24 hours of that, you know? Yeah. So Danielle's telling us that she's had to do a lot of work to find her inner peace, but la you know, last year sucked, but now there's going to be like a couple of people that, um, and next week there's gonna be a couple of people that it made last year such a suck, uh, suck last sucked. year. Last year yeah. sucked because of Lindsay and Carl. So let's see if they're going to make this year suck too. I just want to fun. I just want to party. Why aren't we partying? Why aren't we partying? So then they have to clean up before they uh, leave. And so they're all outside taking trash and they find an ID. And Sierra's like, we should put that in a vault in case we need a fake ID one day. She's like, <laughs> we're 50. Sierra, so. you're putting it in the oven. Oh, I thought this was a vault. Um, so then, That's uh, not an ID. That is literally a frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old so hot dog, that's not an ID. Sierra, put down the bun. <laughs> It's not your passport. Um, so then uh, Wes jumps in the pool and Amanda's like, hello, did someone fall? Hello. Which, by the way, that's, if someone's like drowning in a pool, that's what you should say. Hello, is someone there? <laughs> well, I love her survival instincts. So I have like wacky flirtation. She's like, oh my God, look at him still shooting off fireworks. It's over. Okay, get over it. <laughs> so then Kyle is talking about west and sierra he's like you and sierra seem chummy bro did you even get a kissy kissy come on bro and he's like no man i just like to plant the seed yeah well, now you need to sow the seed you know like water it like give it some vitamin for some sun yeah vitamin d um, I'm just say i've said this a lot and i know i'm being really negative today but Lindsay and carl aren't here to make me positive yet <laughs> um Kyle has an issue. I know this show's all about having fun. I wouldn't be turned on either if I was married to Kyle. The guy's walking around in a mullet. He's drunk all the fucking, like fall down drunk all the time. He even goes into his confessional with a lover boy. At some point, it's just sad, you know? Yeah. Like kind of get it together, bro. It is getting a little sad. So they're all getting ready to leave. Gabby's passed out in the foyer. So Danielle startles her um, just probably by saying, free invitation to club send it. Ha, ah, no, no. Oh, sorry, I had a nightmare. That club said it was a real place. It was! Ah, no! It was so, interesting, because um, she's sleeping on the bench, and Danielle comes up and screams in her face and goes, Come on, let's go! Ha, 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 ha. Danielle's one of those people who just, like, thinks that's hilarious, you know? So she's, like, literally doubled over in laughter. And Gabby is saying, Um, I, like, felt a certain way about coming without Carl and Lindsay, but, like, it's, like, been so nice with the girls without them. I'm like, that? That's what you would have this one which is better yeah it's also weird the whole gabby being like the new danielle for carl and Lindsay. it's sort of something that happened off camera between seasons i guess we got like a a, a hint of it during the reunion but um it's like it's a weird thing like i'm like oh it's i don't under i don't know what the what their relationship is so to hear that gabby is torn 
between uh, where the allegiance is, it's like, okay, you're telling me this, but I don't know if I feel it. Well, so. it's a perfect example of what I just said. People like that, like Lindsay, because Lindsay is like similar to Amanda in that way. Always complaining, always has something to bitch about, about her boyfriend or her life or some drama going on. And the second you stop putting up with it, in this case, Danielle, she just replaces you with the next one who's willing to yeah, do it. She needs a sidekick. And, yeah. Remember, so, Christina um, Gibson was the original, was her original sidekick was Christina Gibson. Then came Danielle. And now we have Gabby. Yeah. I think I see what you're saying a little bit about Gabby, though, because Gabby seems to maybe be sticking around for the look. She's on a second season. Not everybody made it out of that season with the second season, but she did. And um, maybe there's something to that. You know, it's like I'll stick with Lindsay, but I don't think Gabby's stupid and I don't think she's just going to sit around and be run over by Lindsay. No, I'm not saying it's anything to do with. Uh, no, I'm not saying you're saying I'm just saying like. I wonder that I wonder with Gabby. I'm like, why is Gabby falling? Like Gabby seems better than this than to I'm not, be just Lindsay's sidekick. It is surprising. It's it's just more like I don't understand. Like I don't I haven't seen like this new dynamic that they all have. So from for when when Gabby is like, I just don't know because I'm kind of spiraling because it was so fun. And then if we add them into it, what's that going to be like? And I'm like, I understand that you're tortured over this, but I don't understand what your relationship is with, with Carl and Lindsay. So I don't know if I, Oh, like, I thought she was close with them last season. Was she? Yeah. She was like the only person who was being nice to them in the whole group. Everybody else was being mean to them. And yeah. Gabby was like being cool to Lindsay still. So that's when Lindsay started being cool with Gabby. Cause she was only, she was like her only connection to the house. I guess I'm just feeling like they didn't really set this up. Like we didn't see photos of the three of them hanging out all the time, or maybe they did. And I just didn't pay attention to it. But either way, this is a really un, un this is not a major point, And I don't really know why I stopped the whole podcast to discuss this. Yeah, so the plotting um, on this show needs some work. <laughs> I know, need more character development on Summer House. Commercials. Here comes one right now. So they all get they all go back to the city, which surprised me. I thought they'd spend the fourth out in the Hamptons, but they go back to the city, and then we hear like a man Trixie, Trixie Monocle Man, saying we hear a song that has all the usual generic lyrics, like we yeah, run this town. Yeah, don't ask me how to do it. It must be all the swag. You know we run this town. Yeah, it's going down. Yeah, um, yeah. They're really they're really running this town. Cut to Carl playing horse in the park. <laughs> some guys oh carl so it's carl's carl, playing basketball. carl uh, just really ball. killing it carl three ball. owning new york at the local yeah. uh, park okay y'all yeah, three ball everyone three ball <laughs> yeah yeah and some guy goes razzle dazzle carl yeah and then from outside the basketball court we hear oh ow 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 wow handsome oh <laughs> hey babe <laughs> Um, yeah, they're really trying. He's like, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. He's like, hey, babe, hey. Babe, babe. babe, babe. We're not even playing horse today. We're playing babe. The first person <laughs> to spell out babe wins. And I already won because you're my babe, babe. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, like, I'm not even going to call you babe anymore because, like, people make fun of us. So I'm going to call you, like, dude now. And she's like, um, is that supposed to be funny? Like, you're not going to call me babe because people make fun of it? Like, aren't you even your own person anymore? Like, who are you, babe? <laughs> They have, these two have nothing in common. Just like watching the banter between them, this forced banter. She's like, yeah, show me the donk. Show me the donk. I'll give you a water if you like and make a donk. And then he like tries to do a donk and he can't do it. He's like, well, I'll take it. He's on fire. You've earned your water, Carl. Come get your water, Carl. Thanks, and babe. also it becomes a running theme in this thing that Lindsay thinks she's a good partner because she brings you water. Like that's yeah. Lindsay's passive aggressive way of saying that she's a good partner because she brings you water sometimes because <laughs> she does Go it there. later in this episode and she's like, why can't you just be grateful I brought you water? <laughs> Thanks, babe. Thanks for water, babe. Yeah, Please you too. earned your water. You earned it. Look, at, I'm like such a good wife. I'm like bringing you water in the basketball game. You're such a water earner. <laughs> um, yeah, these two, it's like I said, two wrecks. You can't have a car wreck sitting next to a train wreck and think like, oh, they're both wrecks. They have so much in common. The train wreck is like, well, I hit a school bus. It was sad. And the car wreck's like, well, they didn't do an oil change. My engine ran out and then I got hit by an airplane. You know, I was like, well, is that it? And what's your favorite yeah. color? Purple. What's yours? Green. Nothing to do with each other. Like we have nothing in common. We're just smoky piles of rubbish. Okay. Yep. They're just, you know what it is? 
one of them is trash, one of them is recycling. And for a moment, they really just, they, they feel like they are bound to each other because they're both in the refuse area. But eventually, one is headed towards the recycling area and one is headed <sighs> towards the dump. And the truth is, they have different paths in life. And they may be in bags and no longer wanted by the household, but it does not mean that they are going to the same place. Yeah, I think that they have both settled and they both know that they've settled. Like they're a bag settling, of garbage would. Right, but they're settling thinking that there's something better. You know what I mean? It's like they're not committed to they, settling yet. They're, no, the they problem is the, they, they both think that this situation is going to fix everything for them. Like for Carl, it's going to prove that he has matured. He is not a fuckboy. He can commit and that he has the the substance abuse issues that he dealt with um, were the things that were keeping him back and that now he is capable of being a big boy. And for her, it's that she doesn't have to look anymore. She can have the family. She's been like, she, she goes, she burns through these guys over and over again, but that was all because she was looking for the one and the one was there all along. It's a fairy tale. And so they can both feed into these things. Like this will all be fixed. All the issues are going to be gone. But they're yeah. like not gone whatsoever. No, um, they're not gone. Um, yeah. So, but you know what's not? But you know what it is? They those issues are not gone. But you know what else isn't gone? Water, because she has some for you. I got you got water. Some for, if you're good, <laughs> if you're water. a good little boy. She does. So uh, she's all offended because he's gonna not call her babe, which is <laughs> so hilarious because yeah. he doesn't even. He's being funny, no. but. I think it's another situation also where it's the it's Carl try, making her look crazy on purpose, like pushing her buttons. You know what I mean? And being concerned because, with what other people think. Right. Because he knows that that's going to make her crazy. Like, of course, it's Lindsay. So she's like, don't you even have your own brain? It's not the first time they've had the babe discussion. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so it's another example of him making her crazy. Now, this doesn't mean I'm going to excuse everything about Lindsay like I normally do, just because I think Lindsay's amazing, even though she's a fucking wreck but i love Lindsay, and i'm a i will fan out for Lindsay forever even though she's always wrong but she's pretty wrong in this episode but i still see what carl's i still see what you're doing carl okay yeah. i still see what i you're feel like doing. carl is not fully like so Lindsay's like he's like yeah i'm hey i'm, I'm not gonna say baby anymore i'm gonna say dude wouldn't that be funny and she's like um, do you really care what people think about you? Like her little smile, like I'm the supportive wife who brings like water to like my man as we playing basketball. And then like the sweet smile just like drops to this rage face of like, really girl, I thought we agreed. Babe, it's our word. And Carl's like, oh, I'm just making a joke. Oh, I'm making a joke. And he has like this uncomfortable smile that is barely masking the sheer amount of resentment that he has for her. And um, she's like, um, well, that didn't work because it was not funny. <laughs> anyway, like, we're going to go to the Hamptons. Like, everyone's really mean to me over there. So, I'm like, whatever. And, like, we're going to have to worry about that. And, like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and, I mean, at least like, we're, like, wedding planning. And that's in a good place. And he's like, well, I mean, uh, we're, like, going through it for the first time. So, it's like, who knows? Am I right? She's like, but we're in a good place right now. And he's like, I mean, like, now. Because it's, like, a slower point. But it is going to be ratcheting up. He's fucking well, but with you know, her. <laughs> yeah, he I'm is fucking you, with her. He's fucking with her this whole episode, and then he's like, "What? Oh my god, you guys, Lindsay's so crazy." Yeah, he like I could I agree because she was like, "Yeah, you know how there's like ups and downs and like lulls and valleys when you're I mean, well, I mean, actually, you wouldn't know because you don't help. You just do crunches on the floor while I'm like dealing with benders. But like, you know how it would be hard. You know, it's like you know how like when you play basketball and then you make sometimes you make a dunk, but sometimes you don't make a dunk, but you get water anyway. That's like a wedding, you know." Mm -hmm. We're getting married in like two months. Isn't that like crazy how close it is? And he's like, oh, I just like want to go to summer and like let loose. Like I'm finally coming in my own as a single person. I mean, as a sober person. And it's going to be a new Carl. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. It's just going to be a regular Carl. It's not Carl 8.0. Yes, you are. You can say that you're not doing Carl 8.0, but of course you are. Right. And he's like, you know what? Like most couples like 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 you know we've, we're like in a good place but like i think we've been like really dead set on this like wedding day and we're like excited but it's also been incredibly stressful even though i'm not doing any work but it's like stressful in theory 
I mean, listen, you know when you're like sitting at an underpass at a red light and like you see someone with a cardboard sign and you're like, oh my God, like that guy's just like going around begging for stuff. But like it still takes a lot of work to walk in between the cars and knock on windows. <laughs> and I have to remember that, you know, as I watched Lindsay do basically the same thing, but like with free shit for our wedding. So it's hard. Yeah. It's hard on me. Yeah, by like the end of the summer, Carl, do you even realize like we're gonna be looking at our calendars and like we're getting married in like two months? Isn't that like crazy to think about? Isn't that like crazy? And he just like winces like, oh God, oh God, what have I signed up to? I mean, I just like kind of want this summer to be like, I just want to like have fun this summer and like really let loose. Like maybe I'll do something wild. Like maybe I'll go to Barry's boot camp at like 730 in the morning instead of like seven. Just be like a crazy summer. So they talk about how last year really sucked because of Danielle and all, everyone was so mean to Lindsay. Uh, but hopefully it's better this year. And he's like, um, well, hopefully Danielle puts an effort too, but like, it's going to be okay. She goes, well, I invited her to the wedding, as you know, and she hasn't even said anything about the wedding. So I'm like, ah. I mean, she better decide. <laughs> so yeah, now that's the thing. Like, you have not RSVP'd in time. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, local in a perfect world, it'd be great if she could be at the wedding and like be in like good spirits and like supportive and like that'll be like awesome. And like if she doesn't want to go, it's like up to her, but we'd like love for her to be there, right? Isn't that what we're saying? Is that what that's what we're saying, right? Right? What are we saying again? <laughs> so then the Sierra is running this town for real because she's modeling for portfolio pictures so we go see uh her getting into glam and she's getting some new portfolio pictures done and she's basically like i mean i didn't really move to new york to be a model but i mean a better try i'm in new york city for a reason it's not yeah. the microwave placement by the way that's so cool that that microwave can take pictures um it's a camera actually it's just a camera <laughs> then why did i just eat a piece of pizza out of it because you threw you, a piece of pizza at my camera. <laughs> yeah, you actually kind of ruined a $5,000 camera. <laughs> oh my God, my pictures look so greasy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have pizza on your head. Um, now we go to Kyle and Amanda at a restaurant at, where a waiter is pushing ginger margaritas on them. He's like, um, would you like to try our ginger margaritas? We have some wonderful ginger margaritas. I think you'd is really enjoy Is there a enjoy. ginger margarita contest going on at this restaurant? <laughs> like, I do know. You win, do you win a new scarf? Do you win a new, like, fucking uh, order-taking pouch if you, if you sell as many ginger margaritas as you can? What the hell can do? I start you guys off with any apps? Maybe a ginger margarita? I don't know. Maybe a ginger margarita? <laughs> Oh my God, the French fries are good. You want some, a ginger margarita with that? <laughs> hey, you know what? You got, so, sir, you're a blonde, but you know what? If you dyed your hair, you would be a ginger, which reminds me, we have some wonderful ginger margaritas. Anyone? Ginger margaritas? Really so delicious. Like, uh, like, look, um, I just, I know it's been a long time since we've had a date, but I just want to, like, you know, after the last weekend, I just wanted to have a date where I could just say, like, I'm sorry. All right. I'm, I'm really sorry. Okay. And she's like, um, like, and like, you're just like everything or nothing. And like, I know that you like to work, but like, I don't like to work. And then like you, like you working doesn't mean I have to work. And he's like, yeah, but like, you literally have things you just don't do. Like I have to do everything. And then I'm like, how are we supposed to like do anything? Like if, if we can't even take care of the emails, like how are we supposed to have a baby? She's like, oh my God, babies aren't emails, Kyle. And just because I don't like working doesn't mean I won't take care of a living thing. Amanda, you're not doing your fucking job are you hearing this you don't want to do your job and you're being fucking lazy at your job and he's saying he has to do everything because you're not doing it and then you get mad that he's working too much do your fucking job go get a job that's what i exactly say. but i can also see kyle being one of those people that's like well i've taken on a million things because this is my damage in life is that i have to bury myself into work in order to move forward and feel good about this so why aren't you taking on a million things also and she's like because i don't operate like that she's like kyle's a workaholic and he's very passionate and like he works all hours of the day and i will never work that much and he feels like that translates in all aspects of our life like i'm not pulling weight anywhere because i'm like not sending emails at 3 a.m so that being said like he is a workaholic you're not a workaholic and that's totally okay and maybe good but also you can't change people so why you're in a relationship with a workaholic and maybe you don't shouldn't be in a work relationship with a workaholic they shouldn't work the together they shouldn't work together and here's why i'm on her ass about the work stuff because she complains that he works too much but her thing 
she brags about like, well, my thing is the merch and merch sells a ton of stuff. So I'm the one who designed the merch. Yeah, but your merch idea was stolen. You guys got sued because your your logo was stolen. That's your, that's like, that's the one thing you're in charge of. And it was stolen by a company called Loverboy. And it's the same exact logo. I just looked up Loverboy lawsuit right now. Now this is from two years ago. It's, I'm only bringing it up because they're still bringing up the same shit over and over. But that's, that's, that's who he's arguing with. You know what I mean? It's like, well, why are yeah. you doing your job? Well, just go get it. I, th I think you guys shouldn't work. She together. also, I think she also, uh, the other thing is that what she's like, he's like, I just want help and I want you to do, take on more responsibilities. And she goes, but you literally make it sound like I'm a shit person. So she obviously assigns value to these things, right? In a way that like if someone he's like, hey, can you help me out? And then she feels like because she's not helping out, she's a shitty person, which means that probably somewhere along the way, probably one of her parents kind of told her you're not doing your, you're not doing what you should you're, you should be doing and that makes you a bad person so that's why she well, probably I think takes she's it trying to equate personally. it so that he can't say that it's like oh my god you're saying i'm not working well now you're just basically calling me a shitty person which he's not at all you know but it makes him back down and he's like well i i don't listen that's not what i'm saying and she's like but we need to feel, co focus on how we communicate because like if I feel super sad and beaten down after an argument. I'm not going to be productive. Okay, so now he doesn't make you feel good enough to go to work. You're fired. I think they both should be fired maybe from each other. And he's basically like, I think that maybe what I have to do is like work on my communication and not let it build up, which is what he's said like every single year. So anyway, they eventually- But he is are. communicating very clearly. Here's what I need not yeah. to do everything. And she's like, but now you're calling me a terrible person? So, I mean, <laughs> I don't really know. I just, here's what I say. I need a, I need to quit this relationship. I quit. <laughs> okay. I know. I know. So now it's Friday and Amanda's bringing the dogs to the house because one of the dogs has an eye infection and she wants to keep an eye on the dog. Sounds fun. So glad. So glad you brought an infected dog into the home that we're all vacationing at. I'm going to, this is my guess. She's bringing the dog so that way she can focus her energy on the dog instead of Kyle. Like, this is clearly, you know, when you talk, we talked a lot with Kyle Richards, like, oh, this is a classic case of, like, someone buried all their energy into their kids, and now their kids are off to school, so now they have to come face-to-face -face with the only, the issues in their relationship. And this is what's happening here. She's like, you know what, fuck it, I can't deal with Kyle, I'm just gonna focus on this dog, and this dog will make me happy, and as long as I'm happy from the dog, I'll be happy with Kyle, and everything will be fine, everything will be good. So some people start arriving back at the house and then we see Jess and uh, Jesse and West driving together and they're like bonded now because they went to a WNBA game and it was yeah. Jesse's first. And that's something you just don't forget. And then we was, see them. I saw that actually on the news. I saw them uh, at, at the game and then I thought it was so strange how Jesse started just like got on the court and started hitting on the girls in the middle of the game. It's like, sir, you really don't have any boundaries. <laughs> He's like, hey, I heard you all had girlfriends. <laughs> Totally into it. <laughs> that could be your Lisa Leslie. Um, so uh, anyway, so they're talking. Uh, they're yeah, they're totally bonded, and they had a great time. And he was saying how Jesse's saying that he when he when he got to the house, he was on a twenty four hour tightrope. He comes in, doesn't know anyone. They were having a party, but then I remember I'm tall and I've got dimples, so not really a problem for me. I don't have to do anything in these relationships. I'm the tallest one there. People just so towards me. He's like, who do you like? He's like, I thought you knew I liked Sierra, bro. Like, obviously we're going to get married. He's like, well, good luck. Uh, he's like, I thought we were already together. What the hell, bro? He's like, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, it's like, I thought, he's like, well, I hope you guys hit it off. It's like, I thought we were hitting it off. So then um, Paige is like, hey, Kyle, I have an uncomfortable question to ask, but I have to ask it. Do you know that this is an oven and not a microwave? I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page in this house. She's like, when you have sex with Amanda, does she grab that stupid mullet or does she just ignore it and like call out somebody else's name? Like I would, because seriously, like I would have to tell myself sale like 30 times to come. And he's like, uh, I've never really thought about it sexually before, I guess. Oh, well, he's like, how? And then Danielle's like, um, how often do you envision them having sex? Paige is like, um, I've thought about it probably only like four times in my life, but like today it was just like, all I could think about was that mullet. So like, anyway, I guess that says, 
I guess it just speaks about how bored I am these days. Anyway, are you nervous about Lindsay and Carl coming? Um, yeah, and Danielle's like, oh my god, I just want to party. Why aren't we partying? Why aren't we partying right Club now? Nobody it. ruins Club my party. Club and then the, the Kia of love comes down the driveway. And Gabby's in the car. And she's like, oh my god, you guys have like so much baggage. And he's like, yeah, we have a lot of baggage. And the dogs, your favorite kind, they just run out the front door. I know you love that. Yeah, dog. the dogs just come running out. And Carl's like, hey, Reese. Hey, Ryder. How are you girls? Oh, hey, everyone. What's up? I come, I come bearing gifts. I have some lobster tails. What's going on? You look great, by the way. Everyone looks great, by the way. Oh, these are like lobster tails 8.0. They're like so much better than they were last summer. Who were better than they were the summer before that? Like lobsters evolve, guys. Can't wait to cook you some. Um, does the air fryer work this summer? Because I thought it broke last summer. I was like, wow, I love when Lindsay talks about metaphors for so many things in her life. Yeah. Um, so then just people are just like arriving, but Lindsay starts drinking some rosé. And Danielle's like, um, hey, uh, I thought you weren't drinking rosé. I didn't really stock it at Club Sunday last night in, in preparation for you. She's like, no, I don't drink rosé, but like, I want to just like keep it low-cal. I'm supposed to be keeping it low-cal, but I want to have some rosé right now. So she's feeling awkward because the girls are kind of like, oh my God, hi, girl, hi, we're, we're girls. And then Lindsay's just kind of standing over there wondering about air fryers. And mm-hmm. so she's like, oh my God, this is like so awkward because there are like girls here who are like, it's so mean to me. And then we see clips of the reunion, her and Paige going at each other. And uh, Paige saying, um, Lindsay told Danielle that she hates us and she has since the moment she laid eyes on us. Mm-hmm. And Lindsay's like, um, I don't even have hate in my bones because if I did, I would be hateful like you are. And Paige's like, you're literally insane. <laughs> so uh, then Jesse and West come in and Carl's like, all right, Jesse, like, what's up, brother? Nice to meet you. Let's get over with. Let's get over with back to back, bro. Let's do it. Back, back to back. Back to back. Hey, do you do your dunk? Because if you can dunk, uh, free water's in it for you from Lindsay. Yeah. Do you play horse or babe? First question. <laughs> babe is like, babe is the harder game because when you get to the second B, it's like easy to forget which B you're on and you have to start all the way over again. You know what we should play together? Dude. Yeah. Oh, you're not getting any water. <laughs> <laughs> the word is babe. So they go so back they, to like, back. They do a, a, a height comparison. And I think Carl's taller. But he is taller. Once they're actually together, Carl does have that poof. So yeah, I don't know if it's fluff. tall insecurity, like he's worried that someone's going to be taller than him, or if it's like a thinning hair insecurity. I don't know what it is, but a grown man with that poof has to have something wrong. So yeah. I'll just he has leave a it lot there. Of poof. So. A lot of poof. Then West, then Carl sees West. He's like, oh, Wesley, how's it going? Oh, yeah. And then there's like a lot of hugging. And Carl's like, all right, everyone. So uh, dinner's at like 7, 7, 15. So like you look great, everyone. But like you've got 45 minutes to look even better. Okay. So then we have a very important scene, which is West trying to be accommodating to Lindsay about bets. Yeah, so Lindsay's auto-pissed, right? I don't know what she thought if she was going to go to the White House and then people were going to leave her the main bedroom because I know that in Lindsay's head, she's thinking, oh, really? Well, Kyle and Amanda always got the master bedroom because they're the couple. And now me and Carl are a couple and we're like going to get married and we're engaged. So surely they're going to give us the special treatment of giving us the master bedroom. But they didn't. And guess what makes it even worse? Paige has it, yeah. her enemy. So it's a solo, Lindsay, and it's so an that's enemy. what I think is a bubbling under here with Lindsay, and she is yeah. pissed. And Wes is like, "Well, do y'all, did you have pick a room? Because I have that room upstairs. Um, you can have that one if you want it." And she's like, "Oh, the hot one? Thanks, thanks." <laughs> It's like, no, 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 it's not hot. It's just that I sleep hot, so I need to have, like, a fan kicking my ass. And she goes, yeah, because, like, last year, it was, like, the hottest room of, like, in our house. Like, people actually called it, like, the Carl and Lindsay room, but not because we were in it. It's just because it was, like, hot the way we are as a happy couple. <laughs> and he's like, well, you mean the one in the top corner, right? I mean, um, why don't you try it out and tell me if you like the temperature? She goes, um, I mean, I know the house. Um, I've been here, like, for years and years new, but don't overstep. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, eek, sorry. He's like, yeah. Uh, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm like new in the house and I know the relationships with Carl and Lindsay aren't good, but like, whoa. 
So yeah, he doesn't know uh, why she's pissed. And mm-hmm. uh, Carl pretends not to know why she's pissed either, even though he, of course, totally knows why she's pissed. And she's like, well, they left us a choice, but there's only one with a bathroom. And so that's the only choice. So thanks a lot, dicks. So yeah. she's like doing like the sign. I guess it's like the international sign for good vibes. Like a like, shaka. Isn't that shaka? She's doing shaka, this. Whatever. So, uh, so and yeah, by the way, pissed. they all... Carl and Lindsay also told West before the summer, like, yeah, like you can be friends with like anyone, because like even though we don't have great friendships with everyone right now, like don't let that stop you from like having friendships that has like no bearing on like our feelings. So it's totally fine. Like be friends with whoever you want to be friends with, which is a total trap that West is going to fall into, and it's going to be a disaster for him. Yep, because uh, that's not how Lindsay works. Carl will be like that. Because Carl yeah. will be like, oh my God, you, you know what? You should totally be friends with Paige. She's cool. And then yeah. when Lindsay gets pissed, he'll be like, oh my God, look how jealous Lindsay is that you're friends with Paige. Oh. So now Danielle. Um, I love it. That's a good <laughs> thing about watching every episode of the show for years and years. You really understand. You feel, even if I'm wrong, like you totally feel like you know who these people are. And it's yeah. so nice. It's like, it feels so comfortable to just watch this and be like, she's fucking crazy and here's exactly how she's gonna go crazy and then watch it all unfold i just love it's like my nature channel you know yeah since season one so um now they're all moving into their rooms and danielle is struggling with her suitcase and she's and so she's gonna have like jesse help but then she, but then she changes her mind and goes wait i'm in my bad bitch era i got this i was like oh gosh danielle Dan- you just make danielle. me cringe in ways i didn't think i could even cringe She's like, hey, suitcase, we're going to party, right? Yeah, suitcase, let's party, suitcase. Club suitcase send like, it, my bad bitch era. <laughs> so suitcase is like, can we please just be friends? Uh, so then uh, Kyle goes to talk to Danielle when she's in her, well, th- there's more iciness with Carl and Lindsay in their room. Wes is just like, get me out of here, because Lindsay's still pissed. And it's- so Kyle talks to Danielle about um, the lamps. He's like, love the lamps. <laughs> okay, what am I, Martha Stewart? Okay, I'm here, I'm here to talk about Lindsay. How are you with Lindsay? And she's like, um, I mean, I don't know. And then Lindsay passes by the door, and he's like, oh my God, it's Lindsay. Shh. <laughs> I, um, that... <laughs> I see this between Lindsay and Carl in that room. I felt so bad for Wes because he's clearing his stuff out of the bathroom. And then Lindsay and Carl are just like having, they are so angry at each other, but speaking in like a nice way. And he's like, what's wrong? Nothing. I mean, you're not happy with the room. No, it's not. Like what? Like what? Like good vibes. Good vibes. I mean. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Sounds good. Fine, I'm fine. Don't talk, don't bring it up, Carl. I'm fine. I'm happy, Carl. I'm happy, Carl. It's like, who? This is, <laughs> this is so bad. This is so, not good. So then, um, uh, so then, yeah. So Kyle then talks about the lamps and everything, and Danielle's saying it's gonna be an adjustment, and Lindsay walks by, and now Carl is grilling outside, and um, and uh, Amanda's just focusing on the dogs. <laughs> And then we then we see Jesse singing to himself in his room, and he's going, "I know, I know, I know, I know." And I was like, "Oh, this guy really." People, we talked about this last week, but people really made this guy think he has a beautiful voice. And it's just he's so handsome; he can do anything, and you'll be like, "You're so good at that." <laughs> like, literally, he could. I'm trying to think of something stupid that someone could do. But like if he was a checkout guy, I'd be like, you are so talented at checking yeah. people out at the grocery store. Like I've literally never thought that there should be an award for this, but there should be. You are so he, good at it. He, I think he thinks he has like American Idol vocals, but I think he has more like rabbi vocals. Like he has good enough, like a good enough singing voice that you can get up in front of a congregation and you can sing prayers and it sounds nice. It's nice. It's a, It's good. But, like, no one's giving you a record contract anytime soon. But, like, you can hold a room. You can hold Girl, a room. Girl, take off your shirt, put a little put a little auto-tune on it, and I'll fucking buy that album. <laughs> Bring it on. I love that song. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. That's a bop. I know. Oh, so good. It's a bop. <clears throat> so good. Um, the summer. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. He's hot, and his mouth is just so big. I mean, it's like humongous. It's the biggest mouth. It's like Julia Roberts sized. And you know I love Julia Roberts. Not necessarily sexually, but I just love her so much. And she happens to have such a big mouth that I just love people with big mouths. I think they're great. They're great. They can do no wrong. Yeah. So um, now they, uh, they're, they're. 
the, the guys are all downstairs in the kitchen while everyone's getting dressed up. And Carl's like, hey, so uh, how about this? Like, to the boys, y'all. Yeah. Hey, there's like four dudes. Okay, we got three days. Okay, like, cheers, boys. Cheers, boys. To the, to the guys. You look great, by the way. Saturdays for the boys. Saturdays for the boys. So the guy's like, who are guys? What are the girls doing? They're probably going to take forever getting ready. Hey, when the girls come down, we should, like, applaud them. Because, like, they actually came down. They didn't just spend all night getting ready. <laughs> They're girls. And then the girls come in. They're like, oh, my God, the girls did it. <laughs> so then they go outside. They all sit down at the table. And Paige is like, okay, everyone. So we're going to play a game. And before everyone watching at home turns off their TV, for me saying that, I'm just going to say, okay, it'll be just like, it'll just be like the two newbies. Okay. Just for two people. And um, you have to say something that the people sitting here wouldn't know about you. Okay. So um, they start with West. And it's like, well, I've been to all 50 states. And Paige is like, okay, that's kind of lame. But like, whatever. Sure. He's like, no, He's like, well, it's just because my parents wanted to do it together, and I guess I just happened to be there with them. They're like, um, that is like so sad. Anybody else? Is anybody else new here? Hey, person with the big mouth, big mouth Solomon, what say um, you? And he's like, um, I'm a 18 times cancer survivor. I've had cancer literally everywhere, and I'm okay. I think for the most part, but yeah, I had cancer. And they're like, what? They're like, like wow. no one's expecting that, you know? Right. And then he actually tells a really nice story about like how at first he he had testicular cancer and it happened so fast they took out one of his balls and um, then he thought it was fine, but it had spread. So at first he was like, I didn't even really feel like a cancer survivor because it went so fast, but then I really found out what it's like to be sick and then have to be taken care of by my family. And, you know, it's actually and really interesting. Yeah, and he has his five-year checkup uh, in August, which is just like a big deal, et cetera. So uh, everyone's like, wow, Jesse. Yeah. And then Wes is like, oh my God, imagine imagine if, if he went first. <laughs> that would be totally bad. It's like, I had to say, like, I went to all 50 states. <laughs> I went to all 50 states. <laughs> Okay, so then now things are happening. Oh, also I have to point out before they went outside. So everybody's going outside to gather for this dinner and it just shows Lindsay going into the kitchen by herself and just chugging something. Mm. She's like, "Oh god, here we go. My first dinner with these fucking assholes." So we know that Lindsay is about to just tie one on, which for anybody who watches this show is like, "Yay! The show just got getting in." So they all get dressed up um so they're they're ordering some lifts and they're all going to go out so normally this is the time for a Trixie monocle like party 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 we own this town but instead the music is very tense it's very very tense and then it's like one hour later from when they went out and in come Lindsay and Gabby returning to the house and Lindsay's like and this is why I do as much as I can to like not be around them Uh." I was like what happened so we see a rewind and everybody's telling the story from their point of view and Lindsay's like um we were on our way to the club and I got in a lift with the boys uh, which um I already knew was gonna look weird because the girls were gonna be like she hates girls and so I was like you know what? Like, I, they're going to they're gonna use this against me. And I told Carl that. And then Carl <laughs> said. And Carl's like, um, I say calmly. Uh, like, it was like, calm as you can be. I was like, baby, you're fine. Like, it's not that deep. <laughs> and by the way, I love the gloss that they're both putting on this. Because she says, I express my concern to Carl. Which I'm like, you know is not, oh, I express my concern. It's like, me and then you're gonna think this is your fault why did you choose this humor we should have gone with the girls and now you would decide to go with the guys but i can't like not go with you so like why would you do this to me girl and he's and then he's like i said babe you're fine i can see that but it's not that deep which is like babe be quiet come on man like first of all i really want to like just like workshop dude a little bit instead of babe and like you won't even let me do that and now you're like yelling at me now in the back of this uber like it's like not cool dude babe dude see i can't even say babe right anymore because now i'm like caught between the two of them dude i don't even know what to say anymore I'm just like, he basically just shut me down and dismissed my feelings altogether. <sighs> and he's like, she, um, and then she gets like literally like right in my face. And she's like, what are you on right now? And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so then Kyle's like, I can't even put into words just how quickly Lindsay went from zero to 100. I'm like, you don't have to put it into words. We can just watch literally any other season of the show and we will see it and we will know. Yes, and so even Jesse's like, what the fuck, you know? 
So then Gabby is like, so they we get to the bar and then they're like immediately like, huh, we're leaving. Like Lindsay's like, I'm leaving. And I'm like, can I get a drink first? But no, I can't. So we had to leave. <laughs> so that's kind of the story. I agree with you that obviously this was like screaming and yelling and making everybody else feel completely awkward because it's Carl and right. Lindsay. Because Lindsay's drunk and when she's drunk, she's very insen- not she's very sensitive and she's very insecure and she reads into things again just watch season one of this show and watch her relationship with Ara. but so then um the pre- but she Amanda- also is like these girls were so mean to me and they're gonna be fucking mean to me again and you better have my back and he was right. like i'll have your back so then when they get in the car and she's like oh my god these girls are gonna use it against me instead of being like you know what i'll make sure babe that doesn't happen and i've got your back i told you i'd watch out even though she's being unreasonable, he's telling her, come on, like it's not that big of a deal. You're reading shit right. into it. Which, which makes her feel dismissed, which is like her big thing. You know, yep. like she has a huge amount of issues around being dismissed. So um, then the producers are asking Amanda about what happened. And she's like, Lindsay was like visibly upset. And like, wait, hold on. I actually took notes because I'm like, this is so good, but I also want to get drunk, so I don't want to forget. So This is so fucking Amanda. I can't even. <laughs> she starts seeing Lindsay get in a fight, so she whips out her phone and starts taking notes on notes. I mean, that is... <laughs> it's so shady, that but also text, thank you. Fuck. But also thank you for, for making sure you wrote it down. Um, so she says, Lindsay, she's like, Lindsay was saying to me and to Gabby, he's on something. He's so mean to me. I can't do this. I think he's on something. Those are my notes. I was like, well... You probably didn't have to take notes for that. That's pretty easy stuff. And she's really going there, Lindsay, because they're back home. That's... Lindsay's wasted. And she's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm leaving independence, but something's going on with Carl. The way he spoke to me was like very reminiscent of like Carl on Coke. And I don't know what happened to him, but he was not sober today. I'm like, oh, no. Wow, See, here's the is... thing. When I first saw this in the previews, I was like, well, you because it in the preview obviously it's very short because <laughs> it's a preview but it makes it look like she said some offhand thing like are you on coke or something and then he freaked out was like you accused me of being on coke and my opinion right. when i saw that was like if you were a raging addict and listen i'm coming from a place where i've been there okay and someone tells me are you on coke it's almost like I can't get mad because they had dealt with me so much on Coke that I just have to be like, no, I'm not on fucking Coke. Now, would you have this? You know, like, I was kind of like, get over it. That was my opinion when I first saw it. Same. I, I thought it was going to be some. I personally <laughs> thought when I saw the preview that she'd said something like, oh, you're high right now. Shut up. Like, like offhand. Right. He'd be like, oh, how could you say that to me? I'm in recovery. But right. Now, but no, I'm it's with not you bad this. at all. This I is like, terrible. Oh, this is bad. This is outright <laughs> accusations. I, I was even, my mind was even going there to support her to be like, Oh, she probably said something like, what are you going on with? And he heard it like, what are you on? I was like, he probably missed her. I was literally doing the mental like workarounds. But no, she is fully accusing him. And it's shitty. And not only that, but she's going behind his back on camera, on telling camera, everybody and the country fiance. over and over that she's questioning that this guy's sober. Yeah, it's not cool. It's really not cool. It's so wrong. And so then we go back, we're seeing more fun at the club, and then we're back at the house. And Lindsay's like in, in like Gabby's bed or something. And she's like, something is like wrong with Carl. Like the way he's like speaking to me, like he was cocaine Carl tonight. Like that's weird. It was Coke Carl, Cookie Carl. And Gabby's like, um, okay, so let me call him. So she calls up Carl. And he's like, hey, you good? Yeah, we're all like on the way home. Like, are you guys already home? Yeah, we like got home like a, like a while ago. Just want to make sure you guys are good. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for checking. I'll be home in 10 minutes. He's like so high right now. Can you hear how high he was? Like, that was like totally cocaine girl right now. Yeah. And so she's like, oh, now here, now that you called, now he's finally texting me and he's saying, we can have this conversation tomorrow if you want. We need to get a good night's sleep or whatever. And she's, Lindsay writes back, let me know when you're sober. Oh my God. First of all, even beyond the fact that this is so uncool that you're doing this on national TV and to another cast member instead of just talking to him privately, that's beyond uncool. But the fact that you are this wasted and coming after somebody, this is, and we knew this was going to happen when her, when she was doing her whole, like, I'm sober for Carl. And then she's like, well, no, I'm not going to be totally sober for Carl. I mean, that was just in the mm-hmm. beginning. Drugs and alcohol are a huge part of their relationship because they've got such an issue with it on their own that it's it's going to be very hard to have a relationship when you both that's like another person in your relationship you know what well, i mean well it's also like she's like a bad drunk so that's like not a good 
midst. Right, and who was he out doing coke with like, and drinking with all the time? His friends. They're all doing it. It's not like it was just Carl. <laughs> so uh, Andy Cohen made them do that, though. Andy Cohen made them do it. Um, so Lindsay's like, yeah, I said, let me know when you're sober. And Gabby's like, what? And then Carl's like, I'm sober right now, Lindsay. You're not. Period. And she goes, no, sure. But like before, no, you were awful to me and you were so mean to me. Send. So I'm like, you, I cannot even believe. Oh, like this is terrible. This is so bad because, um, this also has to fill Carl with this idea that like, is this what our life is going to be like anytime? Like she's going to just like use my sobriety against me. And she's going to like, anytime she feels wronged or whatever, she's going to accuse me of being like on drugs like that's I mean that's yeah bad. basically is, yeah the, the answer yes, to your, your hypothetical is yes and uh, so he's like I mean guys my heart is like racing when I say it. not because of cocaine just because it's like racing in general but like I'm like shaking <laughs> like not from cocaine not not from cocaine either okay it's like beyond hurtful so he's like that's the person I'm supposed to marry fuck that you know so um, then Amanda of course Amanda and Kyle are kind of the fire in their relationship is relit because they can talk shit about Lindsay again. And that turns yes. Amanda on. Like, she just loves it. She's like, oh, my God, Lindsay is accusing Carl of being on drugs. It's like, arr, arr. I'm surprised we didn't get a full-on sex scene from them tonight. I know. And she's like, making this accusation to someone who is sober is hurtful, but if the sober person is your so- the person you're supposed to marry in a few months, that is, like, the most fucked-up accusation you can make. I feel alive. I feel like I can see colors again. This is amazing. <laughs> we're back i'm in love with you again uh so here's my question why is she jumping to that has there have there been relapses and stuff that we're not talking about because yeah, i don't know to just come know. out with that randomly out of the blue and come this intensely with it seems like there would have been some relapses which by the That's way question. is normal in any attempt at sobriety or any kind of sobriety so even if that happened it's not like i'm not judging it i'm just wondering because the way this is being presented is that Lindsay is coming out of nowhere accusing carl of all this stuff another thing is we didn't see them out so we don't know what's going on and that Mm. sucks on this show when they go out we don't actually see what happens because we have to take their words for it and we know that nobody on reality television is trustworthy they're all going to color in their own way so Mm. yeah i yeah i don't know but um now it's the morning and Carl wakes up alone in his bed, in their bed. And so Lindsay comes back and she has her water. She sort of, she, she gives him some water, like resentfully. Here's your water. And he's like, Well, this oh. is two things. This is one, two, passive aggressive one, right? Because she's like, look at me, I bring you water. Like we said mm-hmm. earlier. But it's also a cocaine insinuation because you wake up with complete cotton mouth when you do coke. So <laughs> It's also like another little dig in a way, you know? So is that why he's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm not uh, having any water right now. But That's like, why he seems offended it. that she brought him water. He's like, oh, well, I don't need this. And he puts it on the on her bedside table. And so it's like, I don't need that, but thanks. Oh, so you're like not having water right now? Like, why can't you just say, like, thank you? <laughs> he's like, oh, I didn't say thank you. And he's like, you were treating me like shit. Uh, no, no, she, she says, says you were treating that. me like shit. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. You felt like that. Yeah, oh, I, I didn't treat you like I didn't treat you like shit, Lindsay. I'm sorry you felt like that. I was trying to talk to you. Um, stop saying I'm sorry you felt like that. It's like, oh, but I am sorry you felt that way, even though you were totally wrong. I'm like, that's not an apology. <laughs> so she's just pushing and pushing, and he's doing that. Look at me, I'm so calm, and you're crazy, kind of thing. But then he starts kind of kind of getting pissed off, and I think he's probably waiting to bring up the sobriety thing when they can either have a real conversation or whatever, but he doesn't really bring it up at first, but he's like, listen, you know, she's saying you're taking your feelings out about everybody else on me. And he's like, no, this started in the car when you got all pissed off at me about nothing. And she's like, this is the worst weekend ever. And we should just go home now. And he's like, fine, if that's what you want, then let's do it. And she's like, stop acting like you're not trying to do this because you're just saying things like, sorry, you feel that way, Carl. Yeah, and he's like, no, no, I said I'm sorry. That I'm- Don't you said I'm sorry that you feel that way. He's like, yeah, because I literally think I had a different experience. Yeah, well, you're incapable of understanding my experience? Yes, I am. I'm a terrible person. No, I'm not allowed to have an opinion about how you spoke to me last night. Have you noticed that argument comes up in both of the couple fights? 
Oh, I guess I'm just a terrible person, you know? Yeah. You have no other it, argument. You must be saying I'm terrible. So he's like, listen, you were wasted and you woke up pissed off. And she's like, oh, well, you're the one who was clearly doing other things. And, and he's so, like, well, well, she, but then she also does this thing where like, she's, <laughs> she's come in so passive aggressively and uh, she's like really angry at him. And then she goes, oh, let me know when you're not angry. <laughs> let me know when you're not angry. She's like, right. well, <laughs> she comes in poking at him to piss him off. And once she finally gets him pissed off, she's like, oh, well now you're, oh, you're pissed now. Oh, great. So now we have to talk with you being angry. Yeah. How about you? Like, we're trying to have a we're trying to have a constructive conversation. Like, try not to be angry. He's like, I'm not angry. You're the one that's drinking all night and wakes up angry. Um, and you're the one that was clearly doing other things. And he's like, I'm. You know what? I'm gonna go for a run right now. I was like gonna go for a run at seven thirty, but you've ruined it all. I'm doing it at seven a.m. instead. So she's like, Wait a minute. Then let me ask you a question. Why did you say I'm sober right now? And he goes, Lindsay, I'm sober. She goes, oh, then why did you say right now then? And he's like, because I was saying in that moment, you were not sober and I was sober right now. You drank all, all day long. You're fucking rude. And I'm trying to be supportive and you're shutting me down and you're fucked up. And she's like, oh, now you're screaming at me. <laughs> oh, now you're screaming at me. Which is like classic Lindsay. He goes, yeah, because I'm upset, okay? I'm allowed to be upset and I'm allowed to have emotions. And like you ever hear about that? Like you, you're you allowed, to, so you're allowed to get pissed off whenever the fuck you want. And she's like, don't scream. I don't scream. Which is hilarious. <laughs> Lindsay okay. not screaming. Yeah, I'm not really sure what went on here. I wish we could have seen, because listen, I've been saying these people are on coke for years. So it's not like I'm beyond saying that someone's on coke, you know? And I've been sober when I've not been so. I've been saying I'm sober sometimes when I've not been so. Like I kind of get a lot of different aspects from this. Um, so while, it, yes, it's horrible what Lindsay's doing. Part of me is like, was he? Like, did he? What's been going on? And why is she going so hard about this? Like, has this been a recurring problem? I don't know. I want to know. But Bad this relationship is clearly broken, but it's broken in a more fun way than Kyle and Amanda's. Is that sick? It is. Well, it is. Th sick and thing he, to say. And she's, and she's trying to do that thing. She's like, I don't scream. I'm like, could we please roll the clip of like, how many sandwiches have you brought me? And then he's like, I'm not screaming. You were screaming. He's like, I'm frustrated. Get some rest. So he storms out. And then he comes back and it's like, you look great, by the way. And then he leaves. And that's the cliffhanger. To be I mean, continued. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there, I, I'm with you. Like, you do have nagging suspicions, but all I can go off of is what Lindsay said and did, which was really so bad. Like, that is that is so bad what she did, like, to the person you want to marry. So, you know, they've been saying, you know, like, obviously, when Carl, you know, called off the wedding right before the wedding day. Everyone's like, boo, Carl, boo, Carl. And like, definitely I was, I was like, yeah, this is classic Carl, classic Carl. But the whole cast was like, just wait till you watch the season, just watch the season. So now I'm like, okay, now we're going to see the other side. Now the other shoe drops and then we're gonna have to make our final verdict, but uh, not looking good. This is a bad piece of evidence for Lindsay. Yeah, I will say that I don't believe that Carl is this angel that he's pretending to be. I mean, we've no, seen Carl, drugs no. or no drugs, Carl has, is Carl, either, either way. He had a really good season last year, and it was also a really rough season for him, too. So there's like some understanding that comes with a lot of that. But I also am looking at this, seeing Carl poke, 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 and act like whenever she has a problem with something, it's like, well, I'm just happy-go-lucky and calm. I don't understand why you're upset, you know? So, you know, I think Lindsay definitely went overboard with that. Um, definitely not Team Lindsay on that whole drug accusation on national yeah. TV thing over and over again. But I'm also smart enough after watching this show for a long time not to just believe everything that Carl says at face value. So that's true. Yeah, because I Carl is still Carl. Carl's still Carl. Lindsay's still Lindsay. They are a disaster. And now um, the cracks are not just showing. These aren't just cracks. These are like. They're just don't say crack that fell down. Okay, we're we're having a drug conversation. Bring us <laughs> back to crack. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for being here. This was fun, and uh, if you want the Miami recap, part one is on our bonus episode. We'll probably be doing part two Monday-ish. Um, well, that will be on the regular feed. So if you want part one, go to Patreon. Also, this video is on Patreon. Also, go to watchwhatcrappens.com and grab tickets for the Netflix is a joke comedy festival. Und, which is German. Because I'm bilingual. Um, tickets for our European tour. Mm. 
We love you guys. Talk to you Bye, next everyone. time. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Saboni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch. It's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.